get back with you about that later. <laughs> uh, this is my friend, Oriana Broderick. I'm so excited to have you here. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yes, yes. And, and welcome to Soul Sessions, everybody. I'm going to scoot up in my chair so people can see me in the box. Um, <laughs> uh, you have a lovely background going on with the fire. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, yes. And your earrings are beautiful as well. <laughs> One of the many things that I make, but yes, I love them. Thank you so much. Oh, you made them? I Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Do you sell? Do you sell them? Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. I'm going to have to get some earrings from you. <laughs> yeah. And I custom make them and it's a whole, you know, like energetic, intuitive kind of deal. It's pretty fun. Oh, do you mind if we talk about that for a minute? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, where, if anybody wants earrings, where can they find you? Or do you have like a website or anything or your main page? Yeah, so you can just find me on Instagram right now. Mm -hmm. I don't have a website. This is, I think I'm celebrating my like one year anniversary this month. Yay! So, yeah, so <laughs> a couple of other businesses, but this one kind of started while I was on the road. And I wasn't sure really what was going to happen. I just kind of got excited about making different jewelry out of nature and different places that I would that I was visiting while we were traveling. So it sort of turned into this like custom work. I went to massage school with a girl who really wanted malas and she we kind of just started talking about different things about people that she wanted to buy them for. Mm -hmm. And so it turned into this sort of like intuitive energetic connection with these people as from this information she was getting. And so I don't know these people but i'd get sort of this feeling about different things that maybe they would need based off the information she was giving me so she kind of helped me start it and it's just kind of blossomed into this custom jewelry making thing where i just ask questions and get some information and then mm -hmm. we kind of go from there and see what comes up so very personalized <laughs> yeah very personalized. and as much nature as i can use and it's usually things that i find on my adventures so it's it's super fun Oh, what like a beautiful energy exchange too, like with the earth and like celebrating earth and like <laughs> really tapping into those energies and like even like these are bird feathers, right? Mm -hmm, they are. Yeah. So these, these ones are pheasant feathers, these longer ones. Mm -hmm. And then this one's kind of just like a standard dove feather and it's painted gold on the bottom. And then oh. this one is a, is a raven feather. How beautiful. And you can em really like embody the bird spirit too, like wearing them. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and I oh, love the that's bird great. spirit. I think there's just something beautiful about the bird and the sky and the wind and just how it all kind of is in harmony together. There's that's something beautiful. beautiful about all those things for me. I have been having, like, with clients come up a lot, like birds. <laughs> birds have been coming up a lot. And so what do birds represent to you? I know you said, like, with the wind and everything, um, but you have, like, a special meaning with birds think that there's a wisdom to birds. I think that we don't talk about birds very much in history. I think the Native Americans, a lot of indigenous people work more connected with the birds, but there's a history and we know different types of birds and descriptions of birds, but I feel like there's an energy, a knowledge that is different that comes from the sky. And so that energy in a bird is almost like a freeing energy, you know, mm -hmm. the air and the wind, there isn't anything that, you know, it's like the water. What, what stops those two things? You know, they're, they just go around. So they're not going to try to go through anything. And so I think there's just something beautiful about knowing and having the knowledge of, of the sky. So that's what it kind of represents for me. Now that's incredible. It is how it to, like dolphins and whales came up for me while you were talking too, like just like very free flowing, like no obstacles in their way, like you were saying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yes. A hundred percent the same thing. Just the knowing of even just a place that we as humans don't know, right? We have a knowing maybe and we're connected energetically from some place, but we don't know everything about what's under there. And mm -hmm. the dolphins have this all knowing of what's going on under there. So it's a different wisdom that is just super interesting to me. Maybe you were a bird in a past life. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into past lives. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure I was a dog in a past life because I'm just so deeply connected with them. And I'm like, it transcends like just this incarnation. <laughs> like I think I was one or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. uh, my friend Maisie said she saw two bluebirds today it was very divine. Um, I love bluebirds. <laughs> Uh, they're a sign of like happiness and positivity. Um, and Carolina says, I used to love wearing earrings with bird feathers, but I didn't like how fake they were. Well, you can get some Orianas. <laughs> and she picked those up in nature. <laughs> yes. And, yes. And they, yes. And so, you know, there's a whole thing about that as well that people sometimes have a hard time with. Um, the feathers that I find are always just there on the ground. And for me, as deeply connected as I feel that I am with the earth and the balance and harmony of all of it, I think that they were there, that they were put there for me. Cause I always go with an intention of, you know, the energy of this person that has asked me to create feather earrings, for instance, and I'll go in on an adventure, you know, with my dogs and my heart mate. And that is my intention is to find those things for that person. So I feel like, you know, from my perspective, Mama Gaia, which is all of our mothers, mm -hmm puts it there for me to create for them. So to me, That's it's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and then we could even get into one of our topics is like quantum physics. And we could talk about like how you connected with that bird and the bird and you made an agreement to help you with this person. It's an all like this beautiful energy exchange. <laughs> yes. yes. It, is, it, it is a beautiful energy exchange. I think that for me, I got so interested in quantum physics because my life path sort of started with psychology. And mm -hmm. so going to school for that and learning that, and it, as much as it made sense to me, the science of it made sense to me, there just seemed like there was something more, you know, mm -hmm. like if this couldn't be the only way. If it's, if this is a science, there's not just one way, right? Because mm -hmm. science is ever changing. So quantum physics to me sort of opens up that door to everything because quantum physics says that we have access to all the energy that's out there. We're entangled with all of it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they haven't fully explored what that means for us energetically. But from my perspective, it's really hard to put anybody in a box of this is what exactly is going on with you. And this is your exact path because I think that we have a connection to the earth here like i really think that's part of our purpose is to have a connection to this sentient being that we're floating on and that entails quantum physics where we have access to other dimensions universes in my perspective is what quantum physics is saying to us um, i think that it's a i think that's a difficult perspective sometimes for people because we only have learned one way um, I, I agree with you <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I, you know, I'm all over the place with it though. Like I don't have one specific belief. That's why I love everything. I don't care what somebody is talking about. Let's talk about it. Especially if you're passionate, I want to hear it because it's just another perspective, which mm -hmm. to me is part of the beauty of this experience is to be able to exchange that. I don't know. I mean, it's love, right? That's what we're exchanging is love because something I'm passionate about, I can share with you. And then you can, you know, ex exchange that energy and share those same things with me. So I think that's the quantum physics part that really gets me. And, you know, there's so much science and you can say all the words and talk about all the <laughs> equations and stuff, right? but that's where it resonates for me in my heart. And it just sort of is able to connect all of these things that I was looking for pretty much my whole life, but really as a child, you know, having, a very challenging childhood with a lot of mental and physical abuse and just all sorts of things took me to this place of what are we and what mm -hmm. is all this and what does that mean and why does that person react that way and so psychology just like busted the doors open for me and then as the sciences that sort of rolled in quantum physics i was like hmm that one really <laughs> makes a lot of sense <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like with quantum physics, like you said, quantum physics it keeps everything so open, like trying to find the center of a circle? <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like with quantum physics, sometimes like there is like so much science stuff behind it, but a lot of quantum physics is like feeling in your heart space. I know that's like very woo and like esoteric. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, it can be right, mm -hmm. but so here's, this is the way that I see it. So the very first time that I was introduced to quantum physics, somebody told me about Schrodinger's cat and how the cat is in the box dead and alive at the same time. So the only way for us to connect with that energetically is through our heart space. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you don't know, and you're not going to be able to form any sort of opinion. And that's just an option here in this experience from my perspective as a human is we have the ability to form an opinion. I think we form an opinion from some obscure and arbitrary ways sometimes, but that's what makes it fun is who, where did that come from? Who knows? You know, like what I was, what just came to my mind when I was saying that is the um, Mandela effect have you ever heard of that uh yes <laughs> i think you could explain it a little bit for any, if anybody <laughs> doesn't well, have heard that before <laughs> I don't, yeah i'm not sure like necessarily where everybody's at as far as age group in here but most people i'm sure have read or heard of the berenstein bears book mm -hmm. so they say that it was berenstein s-t-i-n but some people think it's s-t-a-i-n mm -hmm. and that's how it was spelled and that and they are genuine about that and it is a memory that they have, and that is how they remember it. And so there's a portion of science that says that there's a, a false memory that comes up in our psychology, and we attach to it, and we sort of run for it for, with it, which so many things can come from that. But there's also a whole nother part of that, that you were actually living in a parallel universe. And that's why you remember it so like vividly, because mm -hmm. that was your universe you were living that and you know there's so many of them like um curious george did curious george have a tail or not mm -hmm. you know, things like that that's and so there's somebody that i was listening to this week actually i just found him this week matista desantis oh yes <laughs> and he talks he's about on some like very high frequency levels <laughs> Whoa, wow <laughs> So the first one that I listened to with him was his Aubrey Mar Marcus podcast where they're talking about the nine dimensions that we live yep. in. <laughs> and that was the science that came in for me while he was talking about it, is these parallel universes that we have access to. And so, you know, these are dimensions, so these are way different perspectives, but even just on this very small level of you, you and I, you know, we know we're physical, we can touch ourselves and feel ourselves. And so just from that experience, we're living in different universes. We're living parallel to each other, but we're having these amazingly unique experiences. And so I, it's amazing to me how science fits in all of that too. You know, we can take it and we can say it's only one way, but if we open up our mind and expand it just a little and tap in, like you said, with your heart energy frequency, yes. it opens up an entire <laughs> different like perspective on everything that they talk about with science. So it's not wrong, right? We're not saying anything's wrong. It's just opens up a whole nother world, which is amazing to me. I, oh, Carolina asked, what is the name of the person you just said? If you can say both, Aubrey Marcus and. <laughs> yeah, Aubrey, Aubrey Marcus. And then here, let me see, I wrote it down so that I would, could tell you. Matthias De Stefano. And if anybody wants the nine dimensional video, I know the exact one you're talking about. I love it. <laughs> if anybody wants that to learn more about like dimensions, I will send it to you if you Instagram message me. <laughs> yes, yes it's, it's an amazing video. <laughs> there's another one that they do. It's like a live podcast at um, Fit to Serve that they do in Sedona, which is some sort of like collective group of people that mm -hmm. have these, you know, channelings or whatever. That one is another one that is just he's on another level it is just a but it, but it was so interesting to me because i just found him this week and i was driving when i was listening to them mm -hmm. and it was like i was talking to my best friends everything that they were saying was just like yes that makes so much more sense because for me because of the things that happened growing up as an adult I found myself being very fearful of a lot of things. So like mm -hmm. my mom, she was a practicing Wiccan. From my heart space, I love my mother, but growing up, we had a challenging relationship. So that was very scary to me. Mm -hmm. So anything that even resembled mysticism or anything like that, I was like, nope, because mm -mm, I don't know what that lady was doing and I don't want to be part of any of that. Mm -hmm. My Anna, who was 
probably 75% my caregiver, she was very religious. And so anything outside of scripture and very dogmatic religion was the devil. Mm -hmm. And so it was like very stark differences in my life. So I was like, I want to find the neutral balance where there's not fear. Mm -hmm. Like how could this all, you know, from like, especially growing up 75% with my grandma, how could this all knowing, loving person that was sent here mm -hmm. that killed people also be punishing people? Like that didn't compute for me at all. I was just mm -hmm. like, I, like, this is so convoluted for me that I can't, like, I just can't get on board. I am, a, I have some might say an unhealthy amount of skepticism in life, but I think it's good. <laughs> so many doors for me and from my perspective really opened my heart to so many things that are going on that are really neat and really mm -hmm. amazing and I think that it's easy for us to put weird labels to things and then like not open our hearts to them and then all of a sudden we're missing out and to me what's the point of missing out on this experience you won't I mean this is a very sacred experience so it doesn't make any difference what your experience is I want to hear about it because it's you and you're part of me and I want to hear about it because I think this is really cool that we're all connected in some way. So let's not put this very negative term onto something. And so I think I found my way though into that by having these two very strong forces in my life. And so that is how I like try to navigate all of this because otherwise it starts to be like, you know, when I found my way into the spiritual world, whatever that means for people because mm -hmm. the spiritual world is God too. And, you know, Christianity and all those things, that's all very spiritual. But when I found my way into like the channeling and the people that were portals and all of these really amazing things that people could tap into, I felt some of that fear from some of those people, like mm -hmm. there's some fear associated with it. Right. And it's like this powerless thing that we're doing. And it's like, wait a minute, hold on a second. Like for me, spirituality, it should be finding your power, like remembering your power. And sure, you mm -hmm. have through channels, but still, I like, I really like get super skeptical when I start feeling fear. I start backpedaling a little bit and observing from a little bit further back because I just don't think that this experience is that. I think it's a mm -hmm. low vibration, a low frequency, I guess, is a good way to put it. Uh, Josie said, I agree at age seven, I question the reasonings of the church and religion. Uh, I think souls like you, Oriana, <laughs> are like so <laughs> needed because we can dip too far in one or the other. Like you can be so steeped in your human experience. And like you said, that's a beautiful blessing and gift that we have, but like be cut off from your own source PowerPoint, like knowing that you are a divine creator, but then you can swing too far on the other way and be very detached from the human experience. And then you miss out on like all of the fun, cool things that only the planet earth and this experience have to offer and like mother Gaia. And so it's important to have the psychology and also the spirituality. And I think like with spirituality and religion, like the main thing is with spirituality, it takes like the, there's a higher power above you looking down on you. <laughs> it's the, I am also a divine creator. <laughs> right. I also have that like God or goddess, that empress, that emperor energy. <laughs> yes. I think that was something that was always interesting to me with church. I, my favorite time to go to church was when it was like Christmas because they put on all of these, you know, events and everybody played a character and that was super fun for me. Mm -hmm. Somehow I related to that. Like, what if we're all just playing characters here and you're just, you know, an avatar that can feel basically, because you're just having experience of, for the creator. And what, I mean, what do we know other than this and are, and are able to sense, you know, like mm -hmm. there's a, large portion of that can see and hear and smell and we have all of our senses and even those that don't have all of their senses the other ones are heightened so what other experience do we know for sure has that we can do that we can feel and touch and see and hear so for my perspective we do far from that 
then I don't know, like for sure. I, the more that I hear things and I get to interact with people that are doing different things that I think are neat, the less I feel like I know. <laughs> I feel like it's not, I don't know. There's just something in my being that I feel when I talk about that, that doesn't feel right. Like I feel like we have access to all of that, but the access, like, let me see if I can think of an example because sometimes I feel like I talk in circles if I don't think of an example. <laughs> it's okay. Like, trying to get to a point where I'm like, what? Yeah. I feel you on that. You go down your own rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, That's I'm okay. Sure <laughs> with me, but maybe. <laughs> While you're formulating, I'm going to read this comment here because I think this is like so powerful with Jai, uh, Jai Sun. B yes. said, is spirituality seems to be more of an inner journey where you where you control and control nothing at once. The, and then Regression Session Podcast, hey, Ian says the difference is answering to an unseen God versus answering to yourself. <laughs> and Josie said she's tracking what you're saying. And Carolina <laughs> said, LOL, it's the ADHD. <laughs> It's part of the human experience, my friend. Exactly. That's okay. What I'm trying to say. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to ask, oh, go ahead. No, ask me the question, please. Uh, so I heard one time that we are all source experiencing itself, like through different perceptual lenses. And I, me and my friend were talking, we were like, why do you think that source like birthed us, like created us, right? Created like itself. And I was like, it was probably really boring, like being in energy space with like nothing to experience, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it was like, let me replicate pieces of myself to look through different lenses and how you were talking about how you love like learning from other people, how we have our own neural networking and like build upon different concepts and learn and grow and, you know, thrive. There's like a collective neural networking as well <laughs> that we're a part of. So how, how do you feel about that? <laughs> well, we have to be, I mean, and I say that from the sense of, you know, even like somebody saying, hey, I thought I saw you at the store the other day, but it totally wasn't you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so we have to be fragments of each other. And I think that that is represented in psychology a lot when they talk about twins, because there's a lot of twin studies in the Western teaching of psychology. And mm -hmm. they feel each other from, you know, countries away. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're adopted and, you know, in other homes in totally different environments and they're still feeling each other. And for me specifically, I have always been super sensitive, but didn't have a support group around me to help me understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, I found myself in this weird emotional intelligence place. Like I didn't have any, like I was always feeling all of these things and it would make my moods go from super happy to super sad in like, like that, you know, mm -hmm. from my psychology background, I was like, you know, do I need like medication for this? <laughs> but I also grew up in a scenario where all of my family members had to go through the Western medicine system at some point for some sort of illness or disease that they had. Mm -hmm. I watched that throughout my whole life. And it made me feel like that energetic thing of us being networked together, that we can actually heal ourselves with that energy versus it being specifically having to go to this doctor for this medicine. And I say that not from a mystical place, right? Because I think sometimes <laughs> that lens thing can get super mystical for people, even though I, I do think that that's true. And I think there's a lot <laughs> to be said about that too. But even just from a science place, the placebo effect, I mean, that's a... Those are things that happen. That's a whole science. Mm -hmm. that I mean, and that science actually has less science behind it than us being able to speak to each other through telepathy. That's a 200 page science, pa science paper that they did on telepathy. A lot of the science that we learn in school doesn't have that much science behind it. And we don't use telepathy. Mm -hmm. That to me, connecting all of those dots for me put me on a totally different journey for myself. How do I use sort of these feelings and these emotions and think of them more as alchemy 
sort of, you know, like my, mm -hmm. sure, I'm sad, but how can I optimize that into something that's going to help me in my next moment, right? Because I'm not sad forever. It's not who I am. It's just some energy that I'm feeling right now. And I was so sensitive to that stuff. So I thought we were connected super duper young, like little, little. Mm -hmm. my, my grandparents have a lot of family in Mexico. And so we spend a lot of time in Mexico. And if you've been to Mexico, you know that there are a lot of people on the streets that are begging and selling things and asking for money. Well, I would always attach to the, to the little kids mm -hmm. on the street with their parents. And so I like gave my shoes away one day, like my grandma was so irritated with me. Like my family members were like, what is this? What is this thing? Like what happened to where, where did she, mm -hmm. come from? you know? And so my grandma was like irritated and I gave my shoes away and I would just, but I would feel these deep feelings of these people. Mm -hmm. and so I was in my thirties by the time I like, was started navigating that and like, what does all of this mean? And how can I use it so that I don't always feel so heavy all the time? Mm -hmm. I think I feel it on a totally different level. Like it's, it's crazy for me. I feel like sometimes like almost chaotic, you know, depending mm -hmm. on what's going on in the, co that collective network that you were talking about. Yep. <laughs> it's like, it's like that's really loud white noise. I don't know what, like, that's what comes to my mind when I think of connecting to that ed energy when there's chaos going on in the world. And it is wild to me, like, when I talk to somebody who doesn't, who isn't, like, really tapped into their extrasensory abilities or, like, have, or is an empath right and ha is like attuned to those things because they just don't feel things as deeply <laughs> and i'm like i get affected like so deeply based on like other people's emotions much better now i do i do much better with like boundaries and shielding and clearing <laughs> and things like that but like you were saying like it's not just other people it's like we feel things that are going out in the collective in like the global energies as well and so that's why it's really important to be mindful of all the things that you're consuming and who you're around because you just get like you walking around in the streets like you're feeling everybody and everything like as individuals and as a whole <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. and, and, and if you aren't around a lot of other super sensitive people, it can feel really isolating because you're like, oh, it's just me. <laughs> I'm the only other person. But there's so many of us out there, we just sometimes aren't aware of that. And society doesn't really like talk about it a whole lot. They really don't. And I, I think the way that they do is they give a diagnosis. And there's, mm -hmm. again, I am a firm believer that there is no right or wrong way to do this life. You cannot mess this up. It is your journey, 100%. The only thing that I know for sure is make sure you know your worth because that's an important part of your journey. But, you know, we all learn that on our way. But I think that aside from the diagnosis part that we don't talk about it on an energetic level. And so like for me, I'll just talk about it on a very personal level because sometimes that's easier. So sometimes I find myself not around people who don't have, are, are not empaths. They mm -hmm. are very much empaths, but they don't know. They don't remember that part of who they are. Yep. And so I'm tapping into a different frequency within them that they actually don't feel. Does that make sense? It does. And I want to preface too, like everybody is, has empathy <laughs> and sure, everybody sure. is, this, is yeah, capable totally of even being an empath. Just some people, like you said, don't remember, or they don't intentionally tap into that frequency. Right. I think that it's like a radio. Yes. Each of, us, each of us are little radios. And so each of us have frequencies that we can tap into or you know, the other person now has a frequency. And sometimes those frequencies vibe, right? Like you have mm -hmm. a really great violin that's playing with a really great guitar or something. But sometimes they don't. You know, you have mm -hmm. hard rock trying to play with, you know, classical. And it's just mm -hmm. not, you know, it's a little too much. So if we can, so for me specifically, I find myself around people who 
use their empathic abilities to attach to my energy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does like unconsciously. Right. Yes. <laughs> and so then what happens, because I have a very strong belief that we mirror each other, specifically in relationships, any sort, friendships, and you know, it would have to be people that you spend, you know, a little bit of time with, but we still do it, even in jobs. Em empathetic people who really have that really sensitive power, I think it's like we turn on the light and the mirror is there and you're like, whoa, what is mm -hmm. that? <laughs> the energy switches really fast. And so that's how I've experienced it is people attach to my energy and then they mirror it from their perspective, whatever their frequency is. And it's very confusing for me because I'm like, what just happened? Mm -hmm. And then if I can get them to, you know, figure it out and go through the process of it, then it is usually, you know, some sort of energy that they attach to within me because I'm ha I have energies flowing through me from, you know, honestly, <laughs> sometimes I'm like, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll, you know, I've had meditations where somebody's telling me to tell Edna to keep dancing. Who's Edna? So to even have that self-awareness, I know that that self-awareness, I've had that self-awareness my whole life. Mm -hmm. Because I have distinct memories of times where I could feel myself attaching to people's energy or feel them attaching to mine. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that that's what it was at that time. I just was feeling something like anxiousness almost is what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I think that our nervous system. So this is another thing. I'm going to go down a whole rabbit hole with this really quick. So this is another thing about our nervous systems and emotions. I feel like it's the same in our nervous system. The only thing mm -hmm. that's different is our brain. Like joy feels the same as sadness. It's just our brain is telling us that it's one or the other based off of survival. Mm -hmm. So even a joyous moment from your perspective could be super triggering for me. And now I hate it and I want to go home and I'm going to cry, you know? And so it's just your brain telling you. And so if we can tap into our body and what we're feeling, and I say this because I will go back I remember all the way back to when we were talking about earth and being balanced and harmony mm -hmm. with earth. We are earth. Think about it. We come from earth. We come from our mom's womb, which is earth. She's earth. She comes from earth. And then we go back to earth. So to me, it's so important to like heal all those things and to feel your body. But that's so super tough for sensitive people because what mm -hmm. we're feeling isn't always us. And so it can be like, whoa, you know, and that's where the mysticism kind of came in for me because I was like, what is it? But then that's where I found quantum physics because you can sort of put all of those things together, the mysticism mm -hmm. and the energy, because that's all, that's all that this is. We're just energy. We're just denser. We're just more, I mean, if we're atoms, then what are we? Like, I get it. We can feel and we think that this, you know, we think that like, Oh my God, this is so horrible. All this life, sometimes we have those feelings, right? Mm -hmm. But it can, I'm telling you, it can be alchemized into your power. It really can. I think that we influence people like each other so much. Like we get, step into each other's energy field. And if you're a highly sensitive person, empath or whatever, right? You feel that other person's thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Like you're just hyper attuned to them. And you don't have to be born an empath. You can experience some heavy trauma and it creates like this hyper awareness because you're not safe. <laughs> and so you have to feel into the energy of rooms and people before you even interact with them to like protect yourself. And so I tell people, like when I'm talking to empaths about boundaries and shielding and clearing, a lot of times like we get into that anxiety and depression because we're feeling other people's stuff, but our body doesn't know the difference. Like my central nervous system does not know the difference between my sadness and their sadness. So I'm just receiving that. And now it's kicking and flaring up things in me. And I think it's mine, but it's not. <laughs> and it, that isn't talked about enough, like what we were talking about in society, because when I heard the word empath and I started going down that rabbit hole, a lot of my anxiety and depression eased up because I was like, oh, these feelings aren't mine. These emotions aren't mine. I can release that. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like I can let it go. <laughs> 
That's, a, it, that's interesting to me that you say that because I think the reason why, I don't know for sure, but based off of my experience with society, so I've done a bunch of things in my life. I went to school for psychology. I had a son at 17 years old. And I went to college actually for criminal justice because I wanted to be a cop because I was super interested in the minds of criminals. Mm -hmm. And then that led me to psychology. Mm -hmm. And I just, I did a lot of work through school with troubled children. My heart space was not ready for that at that time. So I actually started working with underprivileged kids in conjunction with working at a cardiovascular pulmonary research area at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I've done all these things in my life because I don't know. I have no clue. I just am excited to be a human, I think. And, you know, that's what I had to that's what I had to come to the conclusion of, because my experience with society would say that the way that I did things was wrong. Mm hmm. And jumping from job to job and not having, you know, stable roots and stuff. My experience with my parents and the way that I was raised and the people that were within my universe and even the things that I saw on, you know, TV and stuff, that's, that was the right way to live this, to live. And so <laughs> I, I thought that for a long time, I was just doing this completely wrong. I have no clue. I don't fit in anywhere. And so, you know, that creates so many other problems. So I think for me, creating those neural connections for myself and loving this experience, like in every moment, I'm not like saying I do that all the time because I don't think that healing is linear because I think that it goes back to the dimension thing that we were talking about. This is third dimension because we can feel all this stuff but I think with all of these things that are happening that are like, we're finding out that we're empaths and we have these really amazing yeah. abilities and these sensitivities and these cool things that we can do, right? Because people can do these really amazing things when they tap into all these energies. Mm -hmm. And so now that we're finding that out, I think the flow of energy from the other dimensions is coming through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they were sort of connected that third and fourth dimension and I mean, even people are connecting beyond that, but mm -hmm. just that one, the third and fourth dimension. So we bring in sort of an eternity of these feelings and the stuff that we have going on, things are changing for us. And so I think because they're changing, but they're changing with us still having these bodies. Mm -hmm. I think those feelings that you're talking about, like that anxiousness and stuff, I think those feelings are coming through more heavily. And so but society, I think, is still telling us that it's, you're not taking responsibility if you're saying you're feeling other people's feelings. That's not, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think some of us are triggered by that because I think some of us are struggling with our emotional intelligence based off things that we've been through. People, I don't think, are making those connections on a very high level that we're doing things in our adult lives because, and we're struggling or we're feeling things that we don't understand and we're not seeking the things that we need. We're not trusting ourselves. It's an mm -hmm. intuition, you know? Intuitions draw people like me to people like you or to books or, you know, mm -hmm. the seven people that are in here watching were drawn to us for some reason. There's an energy that they're drawn to. And so that's a difficult thing for people to understand still yet, even mm -hmm. though that information is coming through. And so, for me, it's like, how can we bridge those two things so that people can, so that we can understand and we can bring that more to the surface of what you're going through when you walk into a room, the way that you behave is a real thing that comes from this physical world, but the energy part, mm -hmm. I feel like you can't see it. I understand that you can't see it, but, <laughs> you can't feel it, but I'm telling you it's happening. You know, If we can bridge those two things so people don't take it then I think that we could bring society to a place where we're talking about what's really going on with us. Because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of exterior stuff that we try to do to figure out what this is and what this means. You know, whatever it is that we're going through, it doesn't make any difference. I think we just focus more on things that don't feel very good for us. Mm -hmm. And I think, that's a, I think that's a societal programming as well that comes from 
the changing of a matriarchal society to what we live in now. So before, 2,000 years ago, a little more than that, it was a matriarchal society. Mm -hmm. which, although things are changing, I understand that we're becoming more fluid and there's not such a definitive feminine masculine, but it's still 3D. Mm -hmm. So just because we're getting that information doesn't mean that we can't, we have to still, we can't just remove the masculine and feminine. It's still part, very much part of this experience. That's why the indigenous people of this land called Earth Mama Gaia and Sky Father Sky because there's still that energy here. And I think mm -hmm. that, that all those things can be explained in a way I just, you know, that's something I would have to sit with because that kind of just all came through that there's got to be a bridge. And that's what I was saying. We need people like you there, that bridge between <laughs> where human beings with psychology and like bio biology and physiology, but then we're also galactic etheric energy beings <laughs> and you need both. <laughs> and we're so many things, right? Yes. Like, if you think about it on the sense of what some people are talking about, like mm -hmm. even if you take it, you know, we can take it back to religion because some people in here were, you know, made some really good points about it, about, mm -hmm. you know, I think for me, it was the fear of God that's talked about a lot in dogmatic religion. Mm -hmm. And I told you before, I don't, I step back a little bit of steps when that comes out, because that to me doesn't feel like this experience. Mm -hmm. it, it's too heavy in my being, you know, it makes me almost feel sick, I guess. Like even now talking about it, it like feels hot here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, I always have my like, I don't like come on what I'm talking about like because I grew up in a lot of like heavy dense religious constructs and there's beautiful things about religion and the church like there are beautiful aspects to it but that very like dogmatic like looking down upon like fear-based mentality triggers my fight or flight <laughs> I'm, yeah, yes. I'm like no so I, I mean, like I said, 75% with my grandparents who were extremely religious. And then the other percent, I was with my dad a lot because he mm -hmm. was very much sort of the patriarch of me because he was what I deemed safe at that time. And so I was with my dad a lot. And my dad was a Vietnam War veteran who did mine sweeping while he was there. Mm -hmm. So he fear PTSD so everything was fear-based with my dad everything mm. you know came and so it was like I was always trying to find a way out of of that mindset because it just didn't feel right mm -hmm. I mean, really, really the, there's no more to explain than that and so I, I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this comment here. Yeah, because okay I keep getting these interesting. Things. <laughs> it's okay. I know you're like in downloading mode right now. <laughs> um, uh, Jai said, "If you don't tell, so if you don't know who you are, society is set up to tell you exactly who you are." And mm -hmm. then Josie said, "Yes, Jesus dying on the cross triggers me." And so I think when you were talking about into and me too, same, um, because I heard this thing one time and I hope this doesn't offend anyone, but someone said like, it's very gaslighty of like, Jesus, and I love Jesus. Like Jesus is on my spirit team and I love him very much, but it's like, it's very gaslighty to assume that you wanted me or that I wanted you to die for my sins. <laughs> like I didn't ask that. <laughs> um, but anyway, we don't have to get into all that, but um, I was, what was I going to say? No, I lost it. I got, I got caught on that. Um, but That's okay. okay. Intuition. Intuition. So I think that society doesn't want us to lean into our intuition because it's like somebody not telling us what to do all of the time. It's like us making our own decisions on what's best for us instead of like being told this is what's best for you. So that's a lot of toppling down capitalism and the way politics work and like the big infrastructure uh, that we have. Uh, intuition is anti that. <laughs> Which I will tell you, if you guys haven't done anything or heard anything about Bruce Lipton, go in and find his talk yes. about exactly what Brittany's talking about. Because <laughs> I love Bruce. Because, <laughs> yes, because... Because right now we are in an age of control and domination. Yes. And so that's what we're seeing in that collective network that we're talking about with politics and all of that thing. And so 
in order for us to achieve control and domination, we also have to achieve division. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, this is one of those things that's just going to come. So, it's okay. <laughs> so, Earth, so Earth is, from my, from my understanding, nature is harmony and balance. Mm -hmm. For us to be here in this experience is a natural experience that is part of Earth. And so we t have taken that part of us out by having this collective control and domination which mm -hmm. has taken us away from unity. Mm -hmm. I think it comes back to that energetic thing. So Jesus, the like, whole, let's go back to the gaslighting thing. Because okay. I, believe, <laughs> I really truly believe that they, that the way that this whole structure is, because I, the guy that I was talking about, Matthias, he says that it's a network of data. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the data associated with making us feel like Jesus died on the cross for us was a connection to where we're at right now in this time space with those because they were getting us ready for those feelings of gaslighting and opening that door for us whatever that looks like for people again I don't have no right or wrong there's no good or bad here I think it just opened up a door but I think that network of data has been happening since they created that dogma around Jesus because okay because to me jesus is love and so the only way that you create him the way that people see him now is to create him under that umbrella of control and domination and so you're creating a division he is not divided from us he is us and he, that energy is attainable to us but if you want control and domination, you don't want people to know that they can heal people with love. Mm -hmm. I'm not, mm -hmm. I, I went, I went to school for massage. That was another thing that I did. I'm a licensed massage therapist. <laughs> you do all the things. <laughs> it was an interesting journey because I'm such a sensitive person that I didn't even like hugs. I had like an issue with touch for a long time, my whole mm -hmm. life really. And so I'm also a Taurus, and so I'm really bullheaded and super strong-willed. Mm -hmm. And so the universe was like, here's massage school. Have fun. <laughs> and you're just, like, touching all these people and, like, picking up on their... For nine straight months, every <laughs> single day, we touched each other. Every single day for nine straight months. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a very interesting experience, but it did lead me to understanding I'm not a healer. I can't heal you as a massage therapist, mm -hmm. but I can hold a loving space for you to yep. heal yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just you coming through me is all because you're mm -hmm. telling me exactly. As soon as I touch your body, you're telling me the healing that you need. And so I'm just tapping in to those other energies is all. Mm -hmm. How many people, how many people are on this earth? I don't know. Billions, billions and billions, like 800 billion or something. Right. So if that is all that we know. If all of those people knew that they had access to that energy, mm -hmm. what would we be doing? Holy moly, what would we be doing? This would be, a, this would be an, another just amazing experience as far as I'm concerned. But to me, I, I get excited for that because to me, that's balance and harmony. Like if mm -hmm. even if you bring that to this physical experience where people just knew, right? You just, you have all this wonderfulness in you that just isn't, I get it. Society just doesn't tell us about it. They just don't let us tap into it. But it's because we're in the age of control and domination. And I think many other things. I don't, another person, 1997, Terrence McKenna, his very last talk, he talks a lot about how quickly life is moving. And mm -hmm. I think in the era, we're really feeling the era that he was talking about in that talk of just everything's moving so fast. And so as a result of it moving so fast, it's like, wait, what's going on now? And it feels like all of these abstract <laughs> things are just, yep. and we're just getting bombarded, right? Because in the mm -hmm. collective field, I mean, if you are even, if you are human on this earth right now, you are tapped into the collective field, my friends. You just are. Mm -hmm. In a way, anyway, whether it's the way that we're talking about here through dimensions and all of that, or through your television, again, there is no wrong way to do this. Everybody has their special journey. So even as tapped in through your television, everyone is tapped into what is going on. And mm -hmm. so you have to be so careful with what you're feeling. 
It doesn't even have to be a thing. Just tap in here. Because here is going to tell you so much about what is going on and what you need to do. Because mm -hmm. that, from my understanding, that heart energy, because your heart pumps blood in the way that it pumps blood and this whole, you know, interconnected system that we have. I don't know. One of the science terms is myofascia, mm -hmm. like this interconnected webbing that we have that is like all connected. It connects all of us to everything inside of us. Mm -hmm. and everybody else has it too. And it's like this liquid sort of spider web. It's so cool. So, you know, that's within us, all of that sort of way that the cells come together are within us. And so that connection to all of those things, I just think that we have to push so much harder through this like field that we're talking about, this sort of mm -hmm. energy frequency, because we're still very much in that control and domination era. And yes. That's what we're feeling heavily right now. Mm -hmm. I think everyone is feeling it again. There's no right or wrong way to feel it. Just is a heavy feeling, and I feel it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think if I feel it sometimes, and I am on a journey to learn how to alchemize this into my power, versus feeling very powerless, because think about the things that are going on and have gone on over the last few years. Mm -hmm. How does that? I mean, how has that made us feel as humans? very powerless because of all everything that's been going on has been going on up here in this political world mm -hmm. because we didn't want to believe that it really is and that's a weird and that's a world that i 100 percent feel powerless in but i also feel is hmm like a frequency that doesn't fit anymore mm -hmm. does that make sense it so does we keep pushing through this frequency that we're feeling of like wait, I am connected to the divine. Mm -hmm. I can feel that as well. And we, we feel that connection. Then we come, I don't know, then there's that bridge, I feel like. Because this to me is a dual, well, it is a dual experience. 3D is a dual experience. It is the experience mm -hmm. of duality. We get to experience night and day. What a beautiful experience, right? We get to watch the sun go to sleep and watch her wake up. Wow, how amazing is that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a beautiful analogy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's just, you know, I think we become, I think, I really do think that that's how we got here is because we got disconnected from how beautiful that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, this might be morbid. We're, okay, we're okay on time. Okay. So here's, <laughs> here's a fun story. I was obsessed with death as a kid. Obsessed. Obsessed with death. Like as a little kid. My parents were mortified, of course. <laughs> One kid that's obsessed with death, like everyone's seen a serial kill killer movie, right? Or watched documentaries. I love them. I love serial killers. I love the way their minds work. I get it. I understand that sounds weird. <laughs> no, it doesn't because I was going to okay, say, we, okay. have, we have such similar backgrounds. I went into psychology and I was like, ooh, I want to like be an interviewer of serial killers. Like I started heading towards criminal justice, right? <laughs> Yes. And I started it, yeah, I was like, oh, that's so interesting and fascinating to me. So I get it. <laughs> Amazing. I'm so glad you get it. Because most people yes. are like, what? They're like, what? Why would you want <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so same, absolutely same. Every single paper that I wrote in my degree in psychology, but if I could make it about a serial killer, it was. Because I was just obsessed about the way that their minds work. And again, I believe that we are in a society that has divided. It's a division. And so we don't, we see them as somebody that's doing something wrong and horrible. Mm -hmm. And I'm not disagreeing or agreeing with that. I'm just saying that's how society as a whole views someone that could completely think out these insane things to do to human beings, you know? Mm -hmm. But because there's that division, I think we're not curious enough about what is going on in there. Mm -hmm. What is happening in there that makes you even not have, I mean, because sometimes they don't even have empathy for what they're doing. It's like, I don't know. Like, are they, like my son would say, are they an NPC? Like, <laughs> 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 player content? What's going on in there? You know? And you 
they're just part of this experience so we can continue division. Who knows? But they were always just amazingly interesting to me. So when I was in elementary school, I used to draw like cemeteries. And okay. Put, I don't, and put like people's like names and rest in peace and all this stuff. So my parents were mortified. They took me to the doctor and found out that I had a heart condition. So that heart condition was somehow correlated with my obsession with death. Okay. And so at that time, that was the 80s. So in the 80s, they didn't really know, and I don't know, I feel like they know even less than they know now in the medical industry, but they put me on opioids. It was a syrup. Interesting. And, okay. Yeah. And so I would take the syrup and I, my parents would send me to school and I'd fall asleep at school and like, I guess, say weird things in my sleep or something, which mm -hmm. I don't... I don't feel like in my heart was true, but that was a story that the teachers were telling. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of becoming obsessed with death, like it led me into psychology because they had a class at Regis University where I went that was part of your like structure. Like it wasn't an elective, it was part of your classes, whatever those are called, I don't, I'm not sure, but um, that was death and dying. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. What is this going to be like? And so there I went off of. So to me, that is that connection that we have with the divine mm -hmm. that's leading us through this journey, leading us through this experience that we created a soul contract, basically, in my, I mean, with ourselves, because mm -hmm. that's where we came from, we're just fragments. Um, I heard that sometimes when, where did I hear it? I think maybe you were talking about it when you were walking through the park about it being Satan or something. You were talking about something and someone asked a question about that. And you don't have to talk about that. It just reminded me of a story that I heard about other people that ask these questions. Like when you are connected with these mm -hmm. energies or entities, people call them, people say, you know, like Bashar and Cryon and Ra and some of these mm -hmm. other entities that people have channeled they ask if it's like Luciferian and, mm -hmm. and I mean, like, yes, but it's not like that. Like, how do you explain that using the human words, honestly? Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But like, I don't know. Like, I always have these like thoughts because again, like I always say, I'm always trying to find like the bridge. Like, how do I use these human words to explain that? Yes. Like, but, the, but that's not what it is there because mm -hmm. there where it's coming is everything and everything is not good or bad. It is like an energy. Mm -hmm. I, I drew it once on our refrigerator in our van, mm -hmm. and a really amazing experience in the desert um, in Arizona, like in this random like desert spot that we found down a dirt road that was just like with these huge saguaro cactus, which I swear. Oh yeah, yeah, I love that. All, of, <laughs> it, all of the knowledge and wisdom of the desert, like yep. of earth, everything that has happened in that area, they have all of the knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And so I had this amazing experience with them and I drew like the energy field in which we are attached to. And it's like so amazing. But we, like, I feel like we take it and we put it in this tiny little box. Mm -hmm. I was having this, ex this um, conversation with my heart rate yesterday morning, I think. And it was like this inner child moment for myself. It was like a healing that my inner child brought forth for me about like what I did as a kid to get to this place where I feel so confused about this experience. Because when I tap into that other part of me that I feel like is sort of the guides, you know, mm -hmm. like, like we talked, like every, well, a lot of people talk about, but my guides, when I tap into them, it's a different feeling than when I sometimes start feeling into my human body. It's mm -hmm. like confusing. And I always explain it as sort of being shrink wrapped into something. And so I was thinking about like, how do, why do I feel that way? And you know, what came to me, you know, those like, crystal puzzles that you can buy at the store like Walmart or whatever like yeah the they're like 3d that image came to me and then I was thinking that's what I did based off of the psychology of the things that I had gone through in my life and the frequencies that I was bringing to me you mm -hmm. know because 
that's something that Western psychology, the way they teach it, they don't talk about it. That when you have stuff going on because of childhood traumas or even adulthood traumas, right? Mm -hmm. Because we get sick as adults or things happen in our lives that throw us into this space of some sort of other journey. Like it kicks us off to do something different. Mm -hmm. And so for me and my journey with that, it was like, I started pulling bits from other people, trying to mm -hmm. fit in, right? Like trying to feel like, okay, that's an, that gets an adverse reaction from other people. So I'm not- Yeah, gonna... picking up on I... like the, <laughs> the cues, like societal cues and trying to make it work for you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so it's like this very, dis so I saw this very distorted image of that 3D sort of crystal puzzle. Mm -hmm. It was all very distorted, like very beautiful and amazing but just very distorted and hard to tell what it was. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like having this conversation and the whole time I'm having this conversation, I'm thinking that was my inner child coming forth to tell me that the reason why I'm confused is because I have a distorted view of myself. And mm. it's just based off of these little bits of things that I tried to put together so that I could, you know, be this pretty little box and fit because of, you know, the way that I grew up or the things that I've even gone through in my adulthood, you know, I was in an abusive relationship even in my adulthood. But a lot of times psychology will teach us to point outwards, right? And say a lot of things about a lot of people. And it's really a frequency about you because you're, you're attaching that frequency to you. Mm -hmm. So you're, so like for me being in an abusive relationship after having abusive parents, Sure, he has his bit to own, of course, but mm -hmm. for me to heal this and what I have going on within this experience, I have to understand that there was a frequency I was carrying in order to attract that person mm -hmm. because they don't just come from anywhere. You know, you, you don't, you don't, it looks like you go to the grocery store, you don't speak to every single person and, you know, walk to your car with every single person because not everyone's attracted to your radio frequency, whatever you're tuned into. Sometimes you need like a mirror outside of yourself to help you heal and grow like through things. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. And so I think there's got, yeah, there's got to be a way to come up with the right verbiage because mm -hmm. that's a very big part of the learning process for people, even if, you know, they're visual learners or kinetic learners, mm -hmm. a verbiage that is necessary for us to, really continue on this growth path because I think we're on an amazing growth path with these mm -hmm. types of people that are in the field, but there's still that heaviness of that collective. And so if we could teach people how to tap into those frequencies so they can feel from their heart space, mm -hmm. I really like how you said that, like, how can we tap into the frequencies here? So we're sort of, you know, bringing to us the roads and the space to open up because I think it goes back to that healing space. I think all of us are healers. I just think that we're healers of ourselves and we mm -hmm. need each other to hold that space. I mean, why did Jesus do it? Because somebody believed in him. That's why, that's mm -hmm. why they, they believed in his love. And why was he able to get them to believe in his love? Because he, be because he believed in his own love. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's the collect, that is my collective thought. <laughs> I would love that to be the collective thought in everything that we do. Every moment that we have with each other is, even if it doesn't feel comfortable, because sometimes mm -hmm. people are going to come into your field that don't feel comfortable. So how can you meet them with love and boundaries and all the things that are in there and that we can have access to? Because we have access to all of it, right? I was, I was watching this show. Here's another fun story about me. I love certain Netflix shows. Like, I love... One, I love social experiments. Two, I always run my own social experiments on Netflix. So the top 10 views of people are watching, mm -hmm. I'll always watch one or two that get me excited. Where if I like read it and I'm like, ooh, this sounds interesting. I mm -hmm. want to see on this. And then it also helps me tap into what, what people are excited about. What are people watching? Yep. You know, and what is... Like what's the collective consciousness at right now? Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know and yep. so love is blind is one of the top viewed shows on netflix right now mm -hmm. so i started watching it which is its own sex social experiment within within itself 
And at the end, they do sort of a reunion and everybody comes together. So everybody's sitting around and there's one guy on the show that nobody really likes. And everybody's calling him a narcissist and like telling him he needs to go get coping skills and stuff. No, don't get me wrong. I get that some people need to hear that and we need to hear it in such a way that we can, that it will penetrate, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody hears on different frequencies as well. But there's something that doesn't feel right about that for me. Like I feel like these words came into our field to use but because we're still very much in that control dominate mindset that we're using them against each other versus mm -hmm. in love because i'm not saying that you have to you know go find your local narcissist and love you know <laughs> your home and love them that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying how can we use these beautiful things that we've been given right cuz mm -hmm. We all have a beautiful language, regardless of whether it's English or whatever. So how can we use these beautiful words to love each other and not? Mm -hmm. And so that was just something that I noticed. There's a lot of love in the show and it's actually quite cute and beautiful if you're, you know, if that's, if that's the part of the show that you're looking at. But I'm always looking to see like the psychology of the show and the psychology of relationships because that's, that's where my life led me. Mm -hmm. I think with everything that has gone on in my life, it led me to understand relationships. How can we be empowering to each other? How can we, you know, hear and listen? I want to start a mindfulness listening sort of course or something. Like, oh, yes. Intentional listening. <laughs> you know, what does all of that mean? And how can we really be there for each other? Because sometimes we're just fixers, right? Some of us are just fixers. Everyone has a fixer in their life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't need that, right? Sometimes when we're having a conversation, we don't need the person on the other end of the conversation to fix it. And so how can we be mindful and have those intuitive conversations with each other, like, and tough ones, right? Because sometimes, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, my healing goes deep into generations of trauma, lifetimes of trauma. Like I said, I came into this world with a heart problem. And so I believe that I, my life before this, or someone close, one of them close to me, I died of a broken heart. Because I came into this life with a broken heart. And so, and it's affected me deeply in my relationships and from an energetic place and also from an actual physical place, like me being able to feel my heart. So like example, I could go to like somewhere where you have to get your heart rate taken. You put your hand in there and get your heart rate taken mm -hmm. and it won't register. It won't register at all. And then other times it feels like it's going to burst out of there depending mm -hmm. on the scenario. And so it's had an effect on my relationships. So it brought me to that conclusion of something happened with a really, really intense relationship in one of my last lives. And now I'm now that version of me has come forth to heal. And so I'm like, Ooh, this is a fun relationship. This is a fun friendship and not Ram Dass said, don't collect people. And I listen to all sorts of different types of teachers and people because I believe that I was going to say, you've got a wide scape of different types of spiritual Because I believe there's messages. There. Everybody oh, gives yeah. messages. <laughs> and I don't always resonate with everything that everybody says. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, use I'll, your discernment. Yeah, I'll listen to a whole talk and I'll be like, mm, but there was something really good in that. And he mm -hmm. always says, don't collect people. And so it's not really like, ooh, this is a fun friendship. Let me hold on to it. It is more, let me like, you know, let's experience this together because mm -hmm. we're here together in this experience right now. You know, like we don't even have to exchange anything. Let's just be here together in this yep. experience. Be so, here now. <laughs> yeah. That's why he said not to collect people, right? And I don't, and I don't even necessarily resonate with the way that he talks about be here now, but I think Krishna Das, I resonate with the way that he puts it just because he uses a lot of foul language and I really like that. <laughs> I really like, like, he's like, I don't, I don't effing know. I have no idea. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <'Cause> he's <laughs> <in> a real. <laughs> that's what we do, though, right? We find these teachers that resonate with us. And mm -hmm. like they talk about, we like fall in, we fall in love with them because they're such a beautiful manifestation of our love with from within us. And so we like sort of fall in love with them. And then 
when he comes and, you know, at his talks and people are in love with the way that he, you know, chants and all of the beautiful messages that he has and they give him these really intense questions and he's like, mm. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he practicing, I guess. He's like, mm. yeah. <laughs> I mean, because that's, that's real. What do we, I mean, the more that you explore where you're at in your journey, mm -hmm. do you feel like you know more or less about this experience? I agree with you. And I think that at the end of the day, like every, like what is reality? You see what I'm saying? Like it's all like perceptions and beliefs and all these things, but what is real is love. Like, I think that is like the one universal truth that like transcends everything. <laughs> but other than that, like, how do we know? It's like hundreds of years ago, they thought the earth was flat and we revolved around, what was it? Uh, not the sun, but like something else, right? Like there's so many things that have been like disproven wrong, but it was true for those people in that time and scape. <laughs> like another like four, somebody was saying like how smart Elon Musk is and like how far advanced. And it was like a thousand years from now, they might be like, what was he talking about? <laughs> like that stuff like makes sense. <laughs> right. And it's yeah. That's interesting that you brought up Elon Musk and that what came, like, what I thought of when you brought him up. So there's a, cos I think I told you about the cosmology course that I'm taking on EDX. Oh, and yes. I and listen, I listened to, I listened to that, by the way, amazing that you had some sort of awakening during that music. Because that music was like, yeah, it was a transcendent, they're just the sounds. I'm very, I'm very sensitive to different sounds too, mm -hmm. as well, so, um. I just, I didn't. That's the beautiful thing skeptical. about being an empath and sensitive. We feel into things like so incredibly deeply. It's not just feeling thoughts and emotions. It's art. It's music. Like we really feel that in our soul. <laughs> it's so true though. It's yes. so true. And everything. Like I went to a art um, installation with a fashion designer. Mm hmm and I, like, I could feel the emotion of the dress. Yep. Like, the emotion of the dress, <laughs> but, like, she was feeling when she put into the dress. I was like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like a kid running around, like, looking at it and, like, just amazed by all of the different intricacies and stuff. And I had a friend with me who has been my friend for a long time. So she was, she's on 100% on board with the way that I behave in the <laughs> But I'm not always sure that it's, like, age appropriate and so people are like what is this lady doing <laughs> <laughs> running around everywhere disney world is another place that i do that at like mm -hmm. there's just something about the energy there that is just that like speaks to my inner child and i'm mm -hmm. like totally transported back to a child running around it was just a, i think that was a beautiful thing about having my son growing up and we sort of had that experience together with him mm -hmm. growing up like this fun childhood experience those and everything holds energy i think that's it too like when you're very highly sensitive like you really it's really like you feel into everyone and everything like it's not just people it's also like the clothes that i wear like i put on different clothes depending on what energy i'm trying to to project especially like when i'm in front of people and sometimes like the things i put on don't feel energetically correct it doesn't make sense yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna like put on something else or like the way i'm doing my hair like there's there's an energy that everything carries <laughs> i think it's i think it's cool i think that's part of what drew me to you is because i like again there's something beautiful about being able to put an ambiance on right like mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you have to be fake. That's not yeah. what I'm saying. It's more of a, if this is a stage in which you can act as whichever human you'd like to act, then why not tap into the energy that feels good for you? And so I yep. love, like, I always see people that, like, intentionally put that energy together, right? And I'm always the first one that's like, girl, I like your shirt or whatever, because you can feel that they intentionally put that on to, you know, have a certain amount, have a certain energy or to portray a certain mm -hmm. energy, you know, or just like your earrings. Like there's, those are very powerful energy wise. And like, it comes from like a, like you're a healer. Like I can tell from those earrings, <laughs> like you're a healer and you're very tapped into earth energy. <laughs> right. And it's like, do we want to tap into those subtle energies? Like if you do like, 
a whole new world starts opening up for you. Mm -hmm. They do. And it's, yeah. I, yeah. You have, have you, me. have you ever seen the circle on Netflix? Yes, I think so. Is that the one where she, is that the one where she works at the place that has to do everything, all the activities? Is that that one? Uh, the circle is a social experiment type of like big brother okay. thing that I think you would really enjoy. So it's very like, because we're in the pandemic, they like made a reality show around <laughs> the pandemic. And so they house people in different apartments in one building and they have to have interactions with one another, but through text messages, right? And so it's it's kind of like, you know, like Big Brother type of thing, but there's nobody seeing each other. So at the beginning, they say, do you want to pick a persona to embody and try and like win people over with? Or do you want to be authentically yourself, right? And mm -hmm. so it's so interesting watching this. And, the, and I don't want to spoil too much of it, but the people who are authentically them do the best in the show. Interesting. I'm yeah, you should it. definitely, it, it's like, it's, it's consciously like saying, do we want to mask and build this persona of ourselves <laughs> or do we want to be authentic? And I thought it was so interesting that people who are authentic are the ones that made it all the way. <laughs> so how do you think we tap into our authentic frequency? How do you think we know for sure this is authentically me? I think a lot of times like when I, cause I've masked a lot in my life because I've just like, you were talking about picking up on other people's like cues, like normal cues. I built this persona around myself of like what is normal. And then I lost myself and it's like, who's the mask? Who am I? Right. But I also had a very dim, a deep sense of loneliness. Like I always had to be around people and doing things and, and just busy, 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 busy. And so I lost like, who, who is Brittany? <laughs> and so I think you spending time with yourself and finding your homeostasis point of like, this is who I am without people around me or without the influence of like social media and those things. Like you've got to spend time with yourself, finding yourself to know who you are. <laughs> without the like implications of others <laughs> i love that i love that so much mm -hmm. because i know that that is not like something we think about when we think about how do we authentically find ourselves or mm -hmm. you know there's so much information there's so much information it's, it's just the, so much coming in all the time all the time yeah and from so many different places that that's it's just really cool i i went on a journey three years ago to find what my authentic self was it was after massage school because mm -hmm. what an experience like I said and so that sent me on an experience to figure out what is my authentic self because otherwise I feel everybody's everything and I'm like yeah that per and I know exactly what's going on with that person over there and that person over there and I'm just like this is too much noise it's like like I said mm -hmm. it's a lot too much energy too much impressions too much you know too much data coming in and it really it, it can influence you like so much especially if you're really highly sensitive and the funny thing is like I had to go through this very lonely period of like detaching from people for a while and going into like hermit mode but then it flipped and now I love being in my own energy <laughs> like I love detaching from things and people and just being in my own space <laughs> I love that that's amazing that's I love, I love that as well. I obviously, I have a heartmate who a hundred percent is like just part of me. Like mm -hmm. we decided through all of this that we were going to heal through relationship, which if you're talking about yoga, if you're talking about any sort of, you know, area like that, the relationship is the hardest place to find healing. Mm -hmm. Have another person that is mirroring you and there's lots of energy that is attachments and there's all sorts of things that are going on. And so we made a commitment with each other that we were going to really try to do this together. And so I'm with him a lot, but when we went on our journey together and sold all of our stuff, everything, we had a house and, you know, we were living the very typical family life with our son. Mm -hmm. We sold everything and moved into a van and COVID hit two months after we moved into our van. 
And so this is not to make light of COVID. So if anyone's here that's sensitive about that subject, um, but it was like the universe took everybody away from me. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, whatever was going on so that I could experience what I needed to experience because the question that I put out before it happened was, I need to know what my own frequency is. And yep. even still, even still within my own relationship, right? Like I still feel like there's distance that I could put because sometimes I don't always know the difference between him and I. Mm -hmm. and this is even, you know, more personal. And I know we're almost at a half hour, but the more personal thing is, is I had a falling out with my dad recently and then I came to your live when I was thinking, I was thinking about both of them. My dad, mm -hmm. it's, it's just, that's just the way that it is. I feel like in this human experience, sometimes when you have that, that father wound, your inner child brain comes forward and is like, Hey, you know, this could also be impacting your relationship with, with your husband as well. Mm -hmm. so Definitely. I was thinking about both of them. And then that like part of me that, isn't always in tune with my own feelings was like mm -hmm. oh my God, what does this mean and then it just went straight to like destruction you know what i mean and i'm like i don't know what this means i don't know who she's talking about and i like totally didn't trust myself mm -hmm. and i think that's another one of those things where we kind of ebb and flow out of that sometimes and i don't think that a lot of people have support on what that on with that and what that feels like to ebb and flow out of that like not trusting yourself and especially when you're asking other people to help you right on your healing journey and so i don't know why that came to my mind but the whole scenario i think i think a lot of what you were saying to me had a lot to do with my dad and mm -hmm. it, was, it was weird it was a very weird experience and my inner child felt very different yeah this time than she did all the other times that we've had similar interactions my dad and i she felt very different more of like empowered. Yeah, good. She had the, like she had, the <laughs> and she had the opportunity to be like, no, we're done. Like, good. I am no longer this little girl that you can speak to this way. We're just all done, you know? And like, I think that there's something about when you have abuse in your life and I haven't heard this a ton. So this may be something that other people need to hear outward too. And sometimes when you've done, when you're on that healing journey and you have had issues with your parents, and you didn't have the support on how to handle it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you have to make that cut, like, cause for me with my dad, it has to be a full cut from the connection. Mm -hmm. And that can be difficult for children that come from unsupportive, abusive places. And so you have to really sit with that energy and that feeling because I don't feel like we always make the right choices. Mm -hmm if we don't really sit with what, you know, he said with ourselves, because that's where our true nature comes from. So in anything, I think it's in anything. Like you said, when you put your clothes on in the morning, I, I mean, I do it. Yeah. Obviously I do it. I make jewelry for myself, but you know, I, I'm always find, wanting to find new ways, like to bring my connection to the earth, to all of these really cool energetic things that have come into my universe. It's amazing. Like, I don't know. I think that everything that you do is amazing. I think, oh, thank you. These, I think having these conversations and having people mm -hmm. in here and even being able to put them, you know, out there so people can rewatch them and just even having this verbalization between me and you and putting all that energy out there is just so cool. I think it's just amazing. I don't know. I, I like the ability for us to make these connections. And I think if we could just bring it out, more to people that maybe we might have to change the verbiage just a little bit so that people aren't like, I'm sorry, who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot too. I was a healthy skeptic of that. My husband was the one who turned me on to raw. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> you put that down, you know, cause, cause that was energy that I was given, right? That was a mm -hmm. frequency. I was given for my grandparents and so she, my grandma came out instantly and she was like no nope, okay. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking to or what is going on but mm -mm, don't absolutely not and then once I realized how beautiful even the ritual was for them mm -hmm. to be able to channel that I don't know 
it kind of brought that connection to death for me because I think we've moved past that. We don't make it a sacred ritual anymore. Mm -hmm. And there's something that's really beautiful about that, that I think, you know, a funeral is a funeral. I get it. But that's just, I feel like such a standard like thing that we just do because it's just part of the, you know, society. But I think, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think there's a better way, like a better, more graceful transition. I talk for another time, but I think it's. Yeah, that, that could definitely be something that we talk about next time. Uh, I just actually went to a funeral and I was kind of standing there and like, I felt when this person passed and it was almost like, I know people need that to be able to process and grieve and move forward. But I was standing there and it almost felt not like fake, but it was like, I bought, like, I don't need this procession to feel that love of that person and like help them passing on. But it is nice to come together and like, remember that person and everything. But I agree with you that there's like a more graceful way maybe that it can be done. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think I don't I, I feel that way because I just I feel like that is a presence that has been heavy over the last few years is sort of that idea of death. And there I feel like there have been a lot of people who have sort of looked at their own mortality as a result of the, the pandemic and the things that mm -hmm. you know, what's going on with Ukraine and all the things that are happening. And so I think that when I feel that I think about friends I had a friend who passed it last year she actually worked for me for a long time we mm -hmm. were friends for a very long time my and she was our same age very similar age to you and I and I went to visit her in the hospital and she'd been sick for a long time she had a pulmonary hypertension so mm -hmm. she went around with her and stuff and it was just not I didn't feel right about it does that make sense like mm -hmm. I thought that like there was more that we should be doing. Like someone should be in there combing her hair and, you know, putting it up so it's not, cause she had to stay in bed, you know? So it's like mm -hmm. matted on one side and all like knotted. And I don't know, I just, I have this like heavy feeling of, we take this experience for granted and this body and these feelings and these senses that we have. Mm -hmm. And when we transition out of this experience, feel like there can be a sense of confusion if we don't transition people properly. I absolutely agree with you. I, I have told my son if I am ever to pass that I want not a funeral, but I want like a party for people. Like I want it to be like a fun celebratory, like, oh, she's going on to the next phase. Like, <laughs> like that's right? how I want to exit. I want it to be like, I know that it's still a sad thing and people miss you, but it's like, let's celebrate and throw a party for her going on to the next journey in her life. And that be my exit energy. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. that's sort of your energy here, right? Like, fun. yeah. You know? So why not, you know, that be the remembrance. I think yep. that's such a beautiful thing to ask for. I think we should all feel like, empowered to ask for those types of things when we move on here and for it not to be a conversation that feels heavy like it's mm -hmm. not a conversation and I think if you know right that we're always connected we're always connected forever yep. so no matter what happens here with our physical body we're connected forever and so I don't know it's just different like my my mom died when my son was three mm -hmm. and then my cousin died when he was five so he had a couple of interesting experiences when she passed, when my mom passed away, when my son was three, we cremated her cause that's what she had asked for. Mm -hmm. And she, he drew these little stairs on a piece of paper because the person at the funeral home said that you could put things in with her that, you know, she could take with her basically. And so she had given him this little cherub angel. And so he put the cherub angel in there with her and drew stairs. Mm -hmm. no, prom no prompts from us whatsoever. I just expressed to him that that was a way that he could say goodbye to her is to put something, you know. Mm -hmm. But his view as death was already so different at three years old. Like it was even different th than my understanding of death. Because he just understood it differently, even that at that mm -hmm. young age. 
And then when my cousin died at five, we took him to the funeral and it was my, the first funeral my, my son had ever been to. Like, mm -hmm. after, like open casket, like viewing deal. Okay. And I didn't know how my cousin had died. They were a little bit removed from our family. And mm -hmm. so I didn't know anything about it. I was asked to go to the funeral by my family to, be, to represent the family. So I went with my son and my dad, actually, which it was my mm -hmm. mom's side of the family. So that was a whole different dynamic that I was sucked into, right? So that's where my headspace was. And so I'm holding my son in the, and we're walk up to the casket to pay our respects. And he goes, mom, you didn't tell me that he killed himself. And he was five years old and he didn't know anything about any of that. And I was just like, is that what happened? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Do you so, wonder if Do you wonder if maybe he was like talking to them on like the other side? He had to have been. Yeah. And in his whole life, he's had interesting experiences like that, like different types, and not always humans too, like different types of entities. Like a lot of times, it would be in the middle of the night. And this was a big thing that he did. And it, I, it was so tough for him to have a mom like me because I had PTSD from things that I experienced that I didn't know. I had no clue that I had PTSD because I actually didn't have the support to make those connections. I didn't have mm -hmm. the And so he would wake, he would come and stand next to my bed in the middle of the night. And I would wake up terrified, absolutely frantic. And he's trying to share this experience with me that he just had. Okay. And I'm just go to bed. You got to go to bed. Cause I can't like, it was just so overwhelming, you know? Yeah. So, but he would always like in two, three o'clock in the morning, that like time where they yeah, was the veil was like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so he would like have these experiences and he'd come into the bedroom and be like, mom, mom, what Calvin, what in little, you know, like four five, six, seven mm -hmm. years old. And he would just tell me these stories about these people that were these entities, these things that would come visit him, like the leaf people would come visit him. And they were like, they were like green. And they okay. would always leave this like material behind. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was the leaves from his soccer shoes that he would pick up from the grass and they would be stuck to his soccer shoes. That's what I always like thought, but it wasn't it didn't feel that way. That was just mm -hmm. what rational brain brain was saying. He'd be like, look, mom, they never they left another piece. And it was like this, you know, it, what looked like a leaf, but a lot thicker than that. Mm -hmm. Almost like a skin feeling. Okay. You know? It was just weird. And he'd always had those experiences. And so, of course, I didn't know how to support them in the way that I think he needed. But even now, he's very visual like that and is able to tap into that. But I wonder, too, sometimes, because he came from me, right? So my fascination with death. I wonder if yeah, I was going to say you, you, you had a very different understanding that like transcended this 3D scape experience, even like when you were a child, like, I, I think you didn't have that fear complex because you're like, I know there's something like <laughs> on the other side. So I don't view it as scary like everybody else that does, even if like you weren't conceptualizing that necessarily, but you just like felt it. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, that goes back to knowing, right? Like you were saying, yeah, yourself and sitting with yourself because the explanations that people would give me, like my dad was an atheist, so you can imagine his explanation of death. You're like, it's just dark, like when mm -hmm. you go to sleep and there's just nothing. How you know? And I'm like, I, I'm four years old asking this question, so you can imagine my dad trying to like, say what? <laughs> Why are you, you know? This? But yeah. that's what I'm. I remember it vividly, like it yeah. happened yesterday, you know, where I'm just like insanely confused about what he's saying. And then my grandma explains it to me. And there's a set of rules that you have to follow in this life to decide right. where you go. And I'm just like, it doesn't seem right either. Yep. And one time I will tell you, I was in my twenties, must've been in my late twenties. I think whenever the green mile came out with Tom Hanks mm -hmm. in that movie, John Coffey says, They, lose, they use love against us. They do it every day. He is the lucky one. When one of the guys got sentenced and he was going through the whole Green Mile thing and was getting electrocuted, mm -hmm. he said he was the lucky one. And that made so much sense to me. I realized that, that 
statement seems dark, but it was like something within me like resonated with that statement. And I always thought it was really bad that I resonated with bits and pieces from like movies and TV. Mm -hmm. But then when I was a little younger, but I used to watch a lot of TV growing up because I was a latchkey kid. My parents were never home. Okay. <laughs> so when I was like in, like going into high school, I had this like premonition of that's how I got my messages was through TV and through. So it was like, and my. Me too. I get watching <laughs> TV and mess and movies and music yeah. and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, music. <laughs> my yep. son is really music oriented with that. But like, I always thought it was a bad aspect of me because then people were like, you know, there's like mind control associated with TV and like all these things that people were saying. And I'm just like, well, that's kind of scary too, you know, mm -hmm. but then I had a crow that came to me one day outside and he sat on the fence and he told me that I didn't have the ability to have that mind controlled frequency because yep. I needed that as a kid. I needed somewhere that I could receive the messages from the universe because my parents were too preoccupied with their own dense experience here that they couldn't, you know, relay any messages to yeah, me. Yeah, your guides can talk to you in a whole assortment of ways. It's <laughs> not just like in your ear. Like it can be like all different types of things like TVs and movies and things like that. Yeah. And animals, I always, animals have always come to me and talk to me. I, I used to tell people that and then be like, no, they don't. That's just your imagination. But it was all part of my experience, right? I had a, yep. and it was just, it's, this life is so interesting. We live an interesting human life. We do. It's, we do. It's really fun. <laughs> and if we let it, right? It can be really fun. It can be yeah. really dense. It can be really fun. I think that's another thing too, like when you're receiving messages like that, like you can, t like we talk about a radio and this is the last thing I say, I know we're like close on time here, <laughs> but it's like a radio, like you can tap into the subliminal messages of like them trying to program you through things, right? Or you can tap into the frequency of, I want to hear higher message channelings through this. And it takes practice. It's like a muscle that you have to build sometimes, but you can choose which frequency that you tap into. Yeah. There's, there's good and bad and every, good and bad and like everything. <laughs> it's like, sure. where's your perception pointing? Yeah. Interesting. Well, I have a question for you because sure. of, so I experienced something as a younger, I was in middle school with a girl. We were at some after school activity Mm -hmm. And her and I were not friends. It was like, you know, very typical, popular, not popular kind of thing. And so we were not friends at all. But she kept making like this connection with me, like eye contact and kept smiling at me. And like, it was just a strange, what felt like at the time, a strange connection. And then mm -hmm. the next day she died in a car accident. That experience has always stuck with me because I don't think I understand that side of my power. And so what you were saying, being able to tap into certain frequencies, maybe because you said that, maybe you have some sort of answer for me in that. Because it's always been in my mind, but I've never felt like I had any, like, a, like I didn't understand why it happened, I guess. Yeah, I can, I can give you something if you want that when you were talking and I didn't want to share it because I didn't know how personal you wanted to get. <laughs> um, <laughs> So when you were talking about all those experiences, how I envisioned you was like sticks, not like outside sticks, nature sticks, but like sticks, the deity that helps souls pass on to the, like over on the other side of the underworld and not saying like the underworld is a thing, but I think that death and transitioning is a type of frequency mm -hmm. and there are lantern holders that help people with like shadow work and trauma. Like I go into people's energy body and help light the way for them to come up out of their trauma. I think you help souls transition over to the other side. And I think your son probably has that ability too. That's why he was like picking up on those other dimensions and even with that funeral. But I, you should, do you know who Sticks is? I don't, but now I'm going to go. I would, I would definitely, I think that you'll get some mega downloads from that. And like I said, not necessarily you helping them to the underworld, but there are people that are like death doulas that can sense souls that are kind of like trapped here. And with you being very hypersensitive, I think that you can help like 
release them from those energetic time stamps. And so that girl that was like pointing her perception at you, I think that she was feeling that you can hold space for things like that. Interesting. So okay. I would, I would look up sticks. <laughs> I'm going to. That's so interesting. And even still, the underworld still, that resonates with me too. Because yep. I feel like the other healing session that we had together was yep. like that connection of those two things. Like those two things are within all of us If in this dual experience, right? The shadow. Mm -hmm. and so if we can, that's just another opportunity to bridge somewhere within this experience. Mm -hmm. Oh. As I just as I heard you talking, I was like, sh "They're sticks. They they carry sticks energy." <laughs> oh my gosh, how interesting! Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. You're very welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> like, <laughs> use your discernment <laughs> with that as well. It's sure. just what I heard one of your guides saying: "Tell her sticks." <laughs> Yes, and probably yep. use her discernment too, because everything yep. things come through that. I, like we had that conversation about Bentino when you were doing some other thing, and then it came through that he's been, ha you know, he's had some stuff that he's done, and so it goes back to that spiritual world of like, you know, no matter what world you're in, it's like how can we teach people to be here? Because no matter oh, yeah. where you're at in your journey, there's all sorts of things going on in that, you know, and. I don't know. It always goes back to that. They they use love against us. They do it every day. Well, we we, we are changing that. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of that is changing. A lot of that is like people think it's like this big thing of changing like consciousness as a whole. It starts with like you, like you changing, not changing, but like you healing within and coming from like that love space changes everything outside of you and all the people around you because you're emitting like this huge, big love frequency outside of you and you're enveloping people in that. <laughs> and so you can literally just be here with you and change the collective that way. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was amazing. What yes. Is way to put it. <laughs> All right, I Ariana, know that. I, I know, know we can not, I have, we have to end on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, where can everybody find you? Um, I know like with your earrings that you're selling and creating for people, like where can they do that? Or if they just want to uh, chat with you, have a conversation or anything about that we talked about. Yes. Find me on Instagram. DM me, DM me on Instagram. That's the best way to find me. That's where the only platform that I'm on right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, DM me on there and convince me to get on another platform because <laughs> I'm trying to decide which one would be best for my business. But like I said, it's super new and these are just many of the things that I make. So yes, please come and check me out because I love to create for people. There is nothing more than I love to see people wearing something that will empower the love from within them. So absolutely yeah. yes and thank you so much for coming on today this was an amazing conversation like it was so much fun <laughs> we talked covered so many topics <laughs> <laughs> you get in that like brain coherency you just get on a roll and you're like oh this is this is my person like <laughs> we have all these fun things to talk about <laughs> so thank you i'm very honored that you came on today <laughs> thank you so much i'm absolutely honored to be here with you and I, i'm sure we'll chat again soon oh yes definitely and thank you to everybody that